You should always have three boyfriends. One of them is probably going to be your main, one of them is going to be your side, and the other one's going to be the backup. Okay, three boyfriends. You got the main boyfriend, you got the side boyfriend, and you got the backup. I'm going to address the immorality of modern women who think like this in a moment. But first, I'm going to explain the personality types of the men that she's going to put in each of these three categories. First, the backup boyfriend. He is your stereotypical feminine nice guy. He doesn't sexually excite her because he's not physically attractive or masculine enough to generate that response. But even though he doesn't give her the tingles down there, she knows that if she runs out of other options, he will happily commit to her. He will treat her well, provide her with money, give her a safe life. It's not the exciting life that she wants. That's why he's the backup option if all other options fail. So men listening to this, if there's a girl that you have a crush on and you can't understand why she keeps getting her heart broken by all these douchebag guys and then running to you to cry about it, why she doesn't just date you, you are the backup guy. The reason why she's not sleeping with you is because you're not masculine enough. Enough. However, there can be a guy who is too masculine, and that's the guy who is the side piece, the one that she cheats with. If she's unsatisfied with her main boyfriend and she wants to have an affair, she's not going to hit up the backup boyfriend. No, she's going to go to the side piece. He's probably a dickhead who treats her badly. He's got real cocky, big dick, you know, kind of energy. And she knows that he's going to give her good sex. But he's not the main boyfriend, usually because he doesn't want to be. He's loving that fuckboy player lifestyle. He doesn't want to commit and give up access to all that casual sex. But often it comes from her as well because she knows, as exciting as he is, deep down, he's not main boyfriend material. There's no nuance to him. She can't connect emotionally with him. He's not reliable. And so if she was to get pregnant, there's no way he's going to stick around. And that's why she has the main boyfriend, because she has some characteristics of the side piece boyfriend, but also of the backup boyfriend. However, the important thing to know about the main boyfriend is that when she first met him, he seemed like he was side piece material. Why is that? Well, I'm going to let this woman explain. Women lie, right? They'll say, I want a nice guy, right? And then you see them that night at the club hooking up with some bad boy who everybody knows is not really there for the right reasons, is going to, you know, hit it and run. And you, you're like, well, she's saying she wants a nice guy. Why is she devoting time to that person? So they're not being truthful. She's right. You see, when women first get together with a man, they don't want him to be too friendly. They don't want him to be too feminine, too emotionally available. When they're looking for a man initially, they're not going to be attracted to that, you know, reliable provider energy. No, the initial attraction, that sexual energy is driven by sexual polarization. She's looking for a man who's very masculine because that's going to make her feel very feminine and that dichotomy is going to sexually excite her. But she also doesn't want it to stay that way. Over time, she wants him to change, or to put it more accurately, over time, she wants to change him. That's what most women's fantasy is, is to take a man who's wild and untamed and then by the glory of her femininity, change him so that now he serves her interests. She takes this rogue, this wild beast of a man, and then she bends him to her will so that now he protects and provides for her. But he still has that element of slightly dangerous masculinity so that he's still exciting. What, you don't believe me? You want some proof? Well, how about read any romance novel ever written. This is what women are looking for. They want to play out that fantasy. We saw that in my course. And we also saw how it helps for a man when initially courting a woman to lean into that fantasy to play that role. At the start of the dating process, even if you have a well-developed femininity and you're going to be a really wonderful provider, it doesn't help to necessarily showcase that on the first couple of dates. No, you want to lean into your masculine side, you know, lean into that slightly darker energy. Emphasize that part of your personality play out that role of her fantasy. And slowly as time goes on, you can showcase the fact that you're a more well-rounded person than that. I understand some men are going to hate the idea of doing this because it seems to be betraying their authenticity and whatnot. But, you know, understand the nuance here. I'm not talking about pretending to be something that you're not. I'm talking about emphasizing a certain part of your personality because that's what's appropriate for that context. It's very effective to let women have that fantasy of them being the ones that tamed you. But now let's talk about the morality of modern women thinking that having a side piece boyfriend or a backup boyfriend is ethically okay. Let's start with side pieces. There's one secret you never told your ex. I f***ed a lot of his friends, sorry. Damn. Any of his friends did you f I was cheating on him. I cheated on you. How many songs? Like 17. You cheated. <laughs> but I cheated on him. There's one secret you never told your ex. Um, I f***ed his teammate. What is one secret you never told your ex? That I cheated like a little a bit of time. Do you have some? I mean, I cheated all the time. 
How many times is all the time? Like, realistically. Every time I got the chance. Definitely my favorite line was, I cheated a little bit of times. How did you feel watching that? Were you shocked? Were you surprised? Is there a part of you deep down that still believes the sexist myth that women are the purer, more gentle sex and only scummy, you know, debasey men would ever stoop to something like cheating? Does part of you still think that women are above that sort of thing? And watching that video, did that cause you some pain? Because if so, good. That is reality knocking on your psyche saying, please let me in. Women absolutely cheat. Women absolutely act selfishly. Women absolutely can lie about it. Is it common from women? Statistically, no. The studies show that only about 15% of married women have affairs. I would imagine the statistics for women who cheat on their boyfriends is probably a lot higher because you haven't made that commitment. But it's not like women are guaranteed to cheat on you or anything like that. But it happens. Oh yeah, it absolutely happens. But I'm not going to spend that much time talking about it because the immorality of this is pretty straightforward. Only truly depraved women would ever try and justify cheating on their boyfriends. You're being dishonest, you're being manipulative, you're defrauding the person of time and opportunities by presenting a false image of yourself. It's disgusting, but I think we all know that it's disgusting. So the morality of a side piece boyfriend isn't really worth exploring that much, but the morality of the backup boyfriend I find really fascinating. I see this in my Hey Hero requests a lot. Men who suspect that they might be a backup boyfriend and don't know how to deal with that. I find what really captures my attention about this topic is that women who place men in the friend zone, women who keep men as orbiters, as backup boyfriends, don't seem to be aware that what they're doing is highly immoral. That fascinates me and it frightens me. Women think that they're completely ethically in the clear while doing this. It's like women's conscience it has a blind spot. I'm going to show you a clip right now, which demonstrates how a lot of women think this idea of backup boyfriends is just funny, something to laugh about. How often do you put guys in the friend zone? Um, how often? Yeah, with that thing. How do you, how um, often? I mean, I have a lot of guy friends. Oh. I want you to call one of them and ask them if they want to hook up. Oh, wait, I, I knew I've seen you before. I'm calling Jacob Davey. <laughs> you really just name dropped him and I'm leaving that in. This is going to be really humbling if nobody answers me. What up? Hey, what are you doing? Nothing, why? I just want to talk really fast. With? I just like, okay, Me? you know how like, yeah, with you. I feel bad because I was kind of like curving you the whole time I was at home. No, you're good, you're good. No, but like, do you want to like, fuck when I come back? No. Why? Uh, that ass, that ass, like, I fuck with you, but like, not like that. Like, you're like... I don't know, you're just, I don't know how to say it without being, I don't know, you, 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 we'll hang out soon, that's fine. Yeah, all right, that actually ended up being quite a funny clip. She obviously misread the situation and got rejected. I absolutely loved his response to her crass question, like, do you want to fuck? He's like, no. But humor aside, did you notice at the start, he's like, do you often put men in the friend zone? She's like, yeah, yeah, I've got like a lot of guy friends. And she is fully confident that she can just call one of them up and ask for sex and he'll be down. I struggle to understand how women rationalize this to themselves. Don't they see how dehumanizing it is to these men? Or do they just never think about it? They never consider that a man's pain is something that you have to take note of. It's just not an issue worthy of her consideration. And rather than take ownership of their own immoral behavior, a lot of women actually twist this situation around and turn themselves into the victim. Watch this. Men love to talk about how much it sucks to be put in the friend zone, but can we talk about how it feels to be a woman and realize that you didn't have an actual friend, you just had somebody looming over you waiting for you to agree to f them? sucks. Yeah, I call bullshit on this. Women are not the victims here. Let's be real. The amount of times when a woman genuinely has no idea that he could have feelings for her, like, oh, I really thought we were just friends. Those situations are incredibly rare. Why are these women playing dumb? We know that women are very smart at all of this social stuff. They pick up on the cues, the body language, the tone of voice, and women are especially attuned to when a man has sexual intentions towards her. This is not an accident. This is not a misunderstanding. The truth is, 
is that she led him on. She enjoys the friendship, the benefits, the favors, having a shoulder to cry on, the self-esteem boost, knowing that he exists as a backup option. She consciously chooses to not reference romantic possibilities between the two of them because she knows that if she has to outright reject him, then she can no longer lead him on. She can no longer enjoy all of those benefits. So she selfishly leads him on, knowing full well that he likes her like that. Women, you need to stop lying to yourselves you know that he wanted more than just a friendship. And I'm not saying that the men are blameless here. Men, you have to speak up. If you like her a certain way, then you need to tell her. That's absolutely true. Men have some accountability here, but women... Your hands are not clean. As a general rule, a woman cannot be friends with a single man and safely assume that there is no sexual attraction there. You can't just trust that that's how it is unless you have specifically discussed why it's not romantic, then your assumptions about how he must be feel are criminally negligent. If we're both single and we like each other enough to be friends, then why aren't we dating? That is a conversation that needs to occur. You can't just make assumptions. Now, there may be valid reasons why the two of you shouldn't be dating, even if you're both single, even if you both like each other. Could be personality differences. It could be a difference in the goals that you have for life, a difference in values, a difference in age, whatever it is, there could be reasons, but you need to talk about them. To just assume like, oh, it never occurred to me that my single male friend who likes me a huge amount and wants to spend all his time with me and we become really close friends, it just never occurred to me that he could ever have romantic feelings for me. Who could have possibly seen that coming? That is such Bullshit. The explanation for why she doesn't actually do the decent thing and sit him down and explain that she doesn't have feelings for him in that way and encourage him to go and seek other options is not because of ignorance. It's because of three reasons. One, she is sexist. Two, she is selfish. Or three, she's out for revenge. The sexist explanation is for those women who don't really consider men to be proper humans, worthy of dignity and respect. They exist more as props in a woman's life. And so when considering which course of action to take, she only thinks about her own emotions and what's right for her. Men simply exist to serve women. Their pain isn't real pain. It's not like a woman's pain. And in her sexist hierarchy, the benefits that she gets from that friendship and the self-esteem boost from knowing someone desires her and having a backup option, those are more important because she is a woman than the wasted time, the being led on, all the pain and suffering and humiliation that happens to the man. The second reason is that she's selfish and she wants that backup option. Sure, she could explicitly tell him that she's not interested in him in that way, but then she's just limiting her own options for the future and that's not to her benefit, so why would she do that? Sure, she doesn't want him now, but maybe in five years time, she might be ready to settle down with a boring guy like him and she likes the idea that he's waiting around for that. So she's not going to tell the truth and risk losing him as a backup option. Why would she do that? To be a decent person? No, that's not important. Important. What's more important is that she maintains her options. And the final reason why women don't act ethically in these situations is because often they're out for revenge. I don't mean revenge against a specific man who has wronged her. I mean revenge against men, just all men. They don't consider the man that they're friend zoning to be a genuine victim because in their minds, they're simply doing to men what men have done to them. I want you to watch this clip. I've dated a lot of people. I've dated a series of different types of people, but I have dated a large amount of fuck boys or narcissists. Okay, yeah. And doing my like research of all the people I've dated, I'm like, okay, Jordan, all the guys, and I challenge all our listeners to think this too, all the people who gave me like that really exciting spark or like that I, can't, I need to see them right now were guys who treated me like crap. Men, are you listening? I really hope that I'm not just speaking into the void with these videos. When women tell you this stuff, please pay attention. The men who excite her are the ones who treat her badly. Subscribers to this channel have seen me create videos explaining the psychology of women and why it works like this. But then what happens in the psyche of a woman who continues to chase this kind of a man? You know, she's pursuing all these fuck boys and they're sexually exciting to her, but she keeps getting her heart broken over and over and over again. 
Well, eventually she becomes really bitter. She feels like she's a victim and she's pissed at men. And so she starts to shut down her compassion and empathy. She's like, I don't want to be the one who's getting my heart broken. I don't want to be the, on the receiving end of that. I want to be on the dishing it out end. I'm not talking about all women. If it's a high quality woman and she's got her heart broken in this way a couple of times, then she's going to take accountability. You know, she's going to take responsibility for her choices and the men that she's pursuing and say, you know what, this is on me. I shouldn't be pursuing those kinds of men. I'm going to make better choices. I'm going to start to go for a higher quality of man. I'm certainly not going to perpetuate what was done to me to other people. That's not fair. He used me for sex. I'm not going to use men for friend zone benefits. But for lower quality women, that is exactly what they do. They're like, okay, well, this is just a dog eat dog world. Both genders are just using each other. I was used for sex by these guys. So yeah, I'm just going to use these backup boyfriends. It's time for me to be selfish, get what's right for me. It's such a missed opportunity because they could take the high ground, you know, be the morally superior ones, live up to the reputation of their gender being the more compassionate, nurturing sex. But so many women don't do that. They sink down to that level and prove that they're not better than men, that they're just as exploitative. But that's why I'm so critical of women that do this. I really consider it immoral. You're defrauding men of their potential to pursue other options because instead of being honest, you're just allowing him to believe a fantasy, a delusion. And in so doing, you prevent him from actually meeting a woman he could be with just so you can have a backup option. It's very selfish. It's very immoral. But as harsh as I am with women, I'm not excusing men. Guys, it's on you too. This is a bit 50-50, you know? It's going to take two of you to dance this particular dance. And if you don't want to be led on, then don't allow yourself to be led on. Women cannot exploit you in the friend zone if you never go there in the first place. Stop being friend zoned by women. Like, don't be friend zoned. I don't know. Like, you know when a girl's just friend zoning you and is not interested in you at all. So stop feeding these relationships. They're literally going nowhere. Stop giving yourself false hope. It literally is going nowhere. Have self-respect for yourself and be like, you know what? I am fucking with no woman who don't want me. Now, gentlemen, if you are in the friend zone and you really like this girl, but you worry that you have left it too long to broach this subject without being weird, then you're going to need some help. How do you have that conversation? How are you meant to bring it up? What do you talk about? If that describes you and your situation, you're going to want to check out the full length version of this video because I give the full guide for how to navigate that. What you see here on YouTube, this is just the shortened abridged version of this video. If you want the full length version, come over to my Patreon.